Heroku is a well-known platform as a service product that allows you to easily deploy your Ruby on Rails applications to a cloud service. And I've used Heroku plenty of times in the past, and overall the experience has generally been pretty good. However, it's always good to have alternatives that provide a similar kind of experience. And for several years, there wasn't anything that was really quite the same. There is always Elastic Beanstalk, which is a really great platform that you can deploy your Ruby on Rails applications. However, once you get outside of the Beanstalk ecosystem, needing additional services like Redis, Elasticsearch, or anything else, then it does start to add some complexities. And AWS AppRunner is also a great solution that makes it easy to deploy your applications. However, it still has its own complexities if you need to add additional services like Redis or the networking layers to get things to talk properly. So in this episode, we're going to have a look at Render, which is another great way to deploy your Ruby on Rails applications. It is a platform as a service, and it handles a lot of the configuration and networking stuff that you would otherwise have to do manually. You can see under the starting plan, this is a minimum that you would really need in order to get some kind of auto scaling set up. And if your application has more vertical needs, meaning that you need more CPU or RAM, you are able to scale up those services as well. But I think the point of an offering like Heroku or Render is to take the DevOps side of things off of your plate so you can focus on the development. And if I was starting out a new application, I think Render would be a good choice overall because it does have a lot of the basic offerings that you would really need for a general application. But if you look at the pricing tiers in comparison to Roku, Render does show a great potential savings. And this again is really dependent on your application and your needs. But I could see that any kind of requirement of horizontal scaling or auto scaling, the price does start going up pretty rapidly. So in this episode, we're going to take a look at deploying a basic Ruby on Rails application to the render service and getting it up and running so that we can access it from a fully qualified domain name or FQDN. And did you know that you can go to railstore.com to get your own Ruby on Rails t-shirt or your Drift and Ruby t-shirt? To watch this full episode and more videos, visit driftandruby.com and subscribe to the pro membership.